Alola is a beautiful place where people in Pokemon go and have a great time. Wish I could say the same for Zero's World. Alola everyone, Trayman1 here, we're back with another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review guys. Today we're going to be talking about Sun and Moon episode 100, the lightning bolt that swerves the wind. His name is Zerora guys, so let's go ahead and get into the summary. They have a lot to talk about for this episode as well guys, and then I'll give my thoughts. So let's go ahead and get right into it. This episode does a great job of showing a before and after for Alola. In the beginning, Ash comes outside to see Kakui and Burnett meditating, basically taking in the Alola weather. While it is a normal view to Ash, Kakui states this is, you know, something really special that we should all take in. So Ash and Pikachu ends up joining them. And this is just, you know, they're showing off how beautiful Alola is, the sea, the land, and just everything about Alola. Later on, Ash was traveling through Mele Mele, and then he meets up with Tapu Koko. And he asks Tapu Koko to battle so Ash can prepare for his Pony Island trials, which more than likely confirms that right after the Brock and Misty stuff, we will see Ash go to Pony Island to take on his final trial and grand trial. As Ash and Tabu Koko end up battling, the Tabu Koko from another world ends up signaling to our Tabu Koko and causing a basically wormhole to open up for Ash and Pikachu to go into this other Tabu Koko's world. Upon arriving in this world, we end up seeing Haole City, but this isn't like our Haole City. This Haole City is completely destroyed. It was crazy just seeing this because this is the same scene that we see later on with the fixed up Haole City. So it's just crazy seeing this exact same scene. Just, you know, one Haole City was fixed up and this one right here, you know, it's all broken up. It's so crazy to see that. And that was really cool to show off. Ash doesn't know where he is, so he decides to go and explore and look for somebody. And this is where he ends up encountering Guzzlord, who, once seeing Ash, gets enraged and starts attacking Ash and Pikachu. Not a single one of Ash's attacks work because Guzzlord just keeps eating them all. So Ash and Pikachu decide to go for that Z move, but the Z move and the Z ring is not working in this world. And that is very interesting to see. So basically, Ash and Pikachu would couldn't do anything against this Pokemon because all it kept doing was eating their attacks and they couldn't use their Z-move. This is when a trainer named Dia and his Pokemon Zeroar shows up and basically ends up taking down this Guzzlord. And Ash, and, well not taking down, but basically fighting off this Guzzlord for Ash and Dia to get away basically. Dia ends up explaining to Ash that he was a part of a group called the Ultra Rangers, which is basically this world's Ultra Guardians, a group of people who basically fight off Ultra Beasts. And basically, when Guzzlord came out of the ground, it basically just destroyed the whole Howly City. The Ultra Rangers tried to fight against it, but they were useless. None of their attacks would work. And basically, Guzzlord ended up taking over Howly City, causing for everyone to flee, including the Ultra Rangers, because they couldn't do anything. Dio was the only one who, however, stayed behind and fought to keep it fight off, fighting off against Guzzlord. The most interesting scene in this episode was when we get to see a flashback of, I believe it is Dia. And basically we see a trainer that looks like Ash, but it isn't Ash. It actually appears to be red from what people are saying. It's not really red, but it's, this is Dia in the past. My guess is that this, Dia is Ash in this world. And here's why I think that. In the preview for the next episode, we get to see a group of students in the Pokemon school, which I will talk more about the Pokemon school in a minute. And we get to see a trainer like Ash, Lily, Lana, Kiawe, Malo, and Sophocles. So this has to be the Ash of this world. Dia is the Ash of this world. And basically, yeah, that's really interesting. I did not expect Pokemon to cover this at all. But let's go ahead and finish this summary, and then I'll give my thoughts. Dia tries to get Ash to leave so that Ash basically doesn't get in the way. But Ash wants to show to Dia that he can do this because he's a part of the Ultra Guardians. Now, Dia doesn't know about the Ultra Guardians. And here's one thing interesting. Dia, in his backstory, not didn't mention once that this was Alola. And Ash still doesn't know yet that this is the Alola region. Just wait, just let me finish the summary, then I'll explain when Ash realizes that this is Alola. Basically, Ash has to battle against Dia. If Ash wins, he gets the help. But if he loses, he'll leave and go back to Alola, is what he says. He doesn't say specifically back to Alola, he says go home. But basically, you know, he's staying in Alola right now. Basically, Pikachu and Zero end up getting into a nice battle. 
And through this whole battle, I was rooting for Pikachu because, as you know, in Sun and Moon, Pikachu has been on a win streak this whole series, and it's been crazy. So, I was hoping that Pikachu won this battle too, episode 100, to see him go 100 episodes strong with no losers. But sadly, Zero Aura was just too powerful for Pikachu and ended up defeating Pikachu. Zero Aura is the first Pokemon in the series to defeat Ash's Pikachu in the Sun and Moon anime. Ash's Pikachu hasn't lost a single battle yet. 100 episodes. This is a huge accomplishment in my opinion because in the previous series, we've seen Ash lose pretty early on, basically, you know, to show he's reset. But in this series, he has not been reset. Pikachu is going 100 episodes strong, and I'm really proud of Ash's Pikachu. I'm not mad at this loss at all because it just shows, you know, how much they've grown. And at that, he lost to a legendary. His first lose in the series was to a legendary Pokemon. It shows that it took a legendary Pokemon to be Ash's Pikachu in the Sun and Moon anime. But let me quit rambling about this win streak, and let me go ahead and finish this summer. Ash ends up agreeing that since he lost, that yeah, he'll leave. And basically, Dia is going to go to his base to call the Ultra Rangers to come pick up Ash. His base is actually the Pokemon school. And this is where Ash realizes he is that he is in the Alola region. And that's how they end this episode off. With a cliffhanger of Ash realizing, I am home. This is my home. And basically, the next episode shows a preview of Ash and Dia battling again. And what I believe this is, is that it's a rematch. Ash is trying to tell Dia... I can't leave, basically. Like, Ash is basically trying to win against the to show that I can't leave because this is my home. It's just something's not right. So, hopefully in the next episode, Pikachu can't get his victory back. Yeah, he'll have to start his win streak over. But, you know, it's still an accomplishment. 100 episodes without losing. That's still a big accomplishment. But now, let me go ahead and give it to my thoughts. I have to say, I love the tone of this episode. It's been so much battling from the beginning. Ash battling Coco, then a quick Ash and Guzzlord standoff, and then Ash versus Dia. Also, that's another thing. Pikachu fought three major Pokemon, Tabu Coco, a legendary, Guzzlord, the Ultra Beast, and Dia. So Pikachu also was getting probably, you know, a bit exhausted from that. Hopefully, in the next battle, since Pikachu will be fully healed up, you know, he'll come back and get his victory. I really love how they showed off the Ultra Ruins before basically it became Ultra Ruins. How it was just, you know, Alola just showing off that, hey, this is Ash's world, like, in another universe. And this could possibly end up having, happening to Ash's world. I believe this episode may be a setup for a big arc in this Sun and Moon anime. Maybe, hopefully, after Ash sees this, he goes and prevents Guzzlord from happening in our world. It's said that basically something was happening with them building a power, point in power plant in Mele Mele. And basically, Guzzlord ends up getting created by that. So hopefully, maybe Ash can put a stop to this when he goes home. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be in the next episode exactly. We may have a, you know, a minute. Or maybe it's just never going to happen in our world. I can see that happening as well. I think the biggest plot twist of this all is Dia being, well, not being exactly, but being similar to Red. And basically, Ash too. In the next episode, I really do hope that they show off, you know, flashbacks of Dia and his friends. Basically showing off that this is really basically Ash, Lily, Lana, Mallow, Kyo, and Sophocles in this world. That will be very interesting to see as well. And it's really interesting to see this. Also, I'm wondering what happened to Dia's Litten. Because we see in the scene he has a Litten, but in the future, he only has zero aura. It's crazy to think about because, you know, Ash has a Litten as well. So it's just like it's... It's so connected, it's crazy. Well, my bad, Ash's tour cat. But yeah, he had a lit in that one. I also like how they showed off this world's Top of Coco being shiny. Basically, one of my friends, Goggle Master, who you guys should check out, by the way, had mentioned, I wonder if this is their normal, basically, Top of Coco. Like, do they look at shiny Top of Coco as a regular Top of Coco? That would be pretty interesting, because there's only one Top for each, you know, island. Like, there's no multiple Tapu Cocos and stuff. That, that wouldn't really work out. So that will be very interesting to see as well. I really do like how they handled the way that Ash got here. I thought at first it was just going to be their battle, and then boom, wormhole is up. But they actually handled the scene really well. I really do like that a lot, the way that they basically handled the scene. Now, for the Z-moves not working, that is a very interesting question. I don't really know why the Z-moves didn't work. We may have to wait until the next episode to see why. And because the next episode has to do with Z-Move. So, basically, maybe energy from Tapu Coco has to be given to Ash and Dia. 
before they can end up using their Z moves. That's my best guess on that one. But I really do like how this episode started off with Ash loving Alola so much and, you know, just amazed by how awesome Alola is. And the next ep this episode ends with Ash realizing that this is a destroyed Alola. It's really cool how they did that. The character, like us, the viewers, knew about Ultra Ruins, but the characters in the anime did not. Also, it's going to be interesting to see basically how what's going to happen in the battle between Pikachu and Zero in the next episode. I really do hope Ash wins this battle and gets his comeback against Dia and Zero. Dia wants to basically restore his world to become like our Alola too, so I doubt Dia will be seen in the Alola League in our world. I think he's going to stay in this world after basically, you know, this conflict's resolved. And I am glad about that because I really didn't want to see Dia come and just beat Ash in the League. I did not want that to happen, so that is really cool as well. This, in my opinion, has been one of the most hyped episodes of Sun and Moon today and one of the best. If you guys wonder if you should check it out or not, I do highly recommend you check out this episode. And I'm highly recommending next week's episode before we even get it because this cliffhanger is just so amazing. I remember I was getting so pumped up watching this whole episode. I was like, oh my gosh, the feels and the hype that I got from watching this episode. You guys should really check this episode out. This episode is amazing. And please, in the comment section down below, let me know what you guys think about it. It's also cool, too, to see Zoroa again, because the power of us just came out recently in the United States. So, it's really nice to see the difference between this Zoroa and the movie Zoroa. The movie Zoroa couldn't trust humans because, you know, they ruined the world. Oh, I mean, his home. And basically, in this world, Guzzlord ruined his home. He's with a partner, which is Dia. And it's showing off, basically, how different these two Zoroas are. But thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I cannot wait for the second part of this two-parter special. It's been really hype and exciting. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed. Trey Man 1, peace out.